Hi guys, Colister here with part 3 of the Crash Bandicoot Warped long play. In the previous episode, I finished off the any percent. Now we're gonna go for 100% by doing cleanup. Now that we have the speed shoes power up, we can get gold and platinum relics in the conventional levels, starting with Toad Village. Usually, in Insane Trilogy at least, the speed shoes is not enough. You gotta repeatedly do sliding and jumping in order to get through it as real quickly as possible. And while normally I can get a Platinum Relic in Toad Village, I did play a little sloppily and ended up getting a gold in it in this recording, so... Unlike the previous games in the trilogy, the relics are required for 100% in Crash Bandicoot Warped. Being the specific game in the original PlayStation series where these properly debuted in. Get all gold or platinum relics for maximum game completion. I gotta get a gem in addition to the relic in Boneyard. We're gonna get the relic first and then the gem. Some people like to back away from the stopwatch a good distance and then get the stopwatch by using the fruit bazooka. That's not always necessary to do though. The relics in this game are a lot easier than they are in the other games, so doesn't really matter. assistant. Doesn't make a diff. In this game, if the Triceratops gets the yellow crates, it does count. I know you have to hit the crates directly to make them work in some other games. Even after some Aku buffers, I got a Platinum there, which is fantastic. Now there's another gem in Boneyard I gotta claim as well. This one requires the red gem. None of the boxes are in this route, though, so you can definitely still get the boxes gem before getting the red gem, like I literally did in the playthrough earlier.
The entire route is a more difficult Triceratops chase scene, and some of the lava pits require a double jump in order to cross them. Luckily, you get the red gem specifically after you beat Dingo Dial, where the double jump is unlocked. You can spin out the pterodactyls also. Some of these geysers can be a little tricky to get across. In the medieval levels, you can actually slide and jump along the fences on the sides of the level throughout the throughout the play, which can help getting a platinum relic a little bit easier on the parts where there are pits. Staying close to the inner edge always helps. while you're turning. While going for a rail leg, the part where Crash pauses for a moment after getting Aku invincibility that normally happens doesn't happen. Make sure to spend the night assistant into the night shows there to get through quickly. And there's a platinum relic. I'm gonna shoot the assistant out with the bazooka before starting. Jumping corners also helps.
Bianco. Well, I definitely could have done that better. I can never get a Platinum Relic on the Egyptian levels for some reason. Except for Bug Light. The problem is that in a lot of them, you have to wait, though. Now that I have the purple gem, I gotta get both of the gems in this level as well. So, here we go. From here, we're gonna go backwards. This door will only open if you have the purple jam. And the route is necessary for both of the gems. Pathetic. That was even worse. I was trying to make myself remember that there weren't any more boxes going back that way.
I gotta get both of the gems yet in Dynamite as well. For a similar reason, except with the yellow gem. Get the relic first. I can usually get a platinum relic on this one as well. I just got a gold in this recording. Because, um... I had trouble interfacing with swords quickly. That's all. Failed to get on baby Tyrannosaurus quickly enough. That's what cost me a plat relic. Now here's the annoying part. After you get the gem and the yellow gem route, you have to go right back to the main route and get all the boxes in between the platform and the part where uh, you go to the side view. Or do it before using the platform like I am. You have to dismount him before taking the lift anyway.
like to use the fruit bazooka to clear the explosive boxes out. Just remember that you have to body slam the lock boxes. We're not doing Agapus Rex in this video. That is a subject for my next video after these. There's where the Nitro Switch box is, and a well hidden secret also exists here. If you slide and double jump to get past that stack of steel blocks, there are five extra lives waiting for you. There's also a bonus round, can't forget. You have to body slam in this one consistently. So now we get more relics. Some levels like this one require you to wait at just the right moment before you get the stopwatch because of certain moving platforms, like the carpets here. That was ineffective.
You see how you can run along the very edges on the medieval levels to cross um, the pits during the relic run. That was what I was talking about earlier. I should have enough relics now to unlock the future frenzy route. Before that, though, we're gonna do Area 51, which is the final of the motorcycle race levels. The course is jet black, and you're up against flying saucers instead of roadsters. Barrier cones are put up where you turn and where pits are, so pay extra attention to where they're at in this one. The patrol cars also come down the road head on to you, so avoid getting in their way or they'll stop you in place. Not good. If you're good like I am, you can get both of the gems and the platinum relics simultaneously here. You get one gem for winning the race, and one for breaking all the boxes. You'll need the break in order to make this turn. And there you go. That was easy. Of course, it requires memorization. So from here, we finally are able to get the gems of Future Frenzy.
it would be best to use the fruit bazooka a lot here. I'm gonna wait for the turn platforms. And then you have to go backwards. If you're weak, there's a checkpoint just shortly ahead, right here. So now that that's done, I gotta go right back to the left again. You can actually double jump over the laser gates, or double jump and that tornado spin around them. So here's where we left off at earlier.
didn't need to hit the Nitro Switch boss, because I already shot them all with the Fruit Bazooka. <laughs> While it's obviously not the fastest way to get through it, I am a play it safer. Again, I can't get a platinum relic hardly on any of the Egyptian levels except for Bug Light. Even knowing about this right here. And I think the fault of that is the fact that you have to wait a lot in it for the closing doors and stuff. You can run right through the spears while they're fully extended safely. So that cost me an invincibility phase, and I wasn't even able to get the Obgu on the other stack of crates because I broke it too early. Future Frenzy, on the other hand, I can usually get a Platinum Relic in. Watch. I never realized how long Future Frenzy really was until I recorded this video. Hmm.
Now we got another crappy Egyptian level that requires a lot of waiting. Ultimately meaning no Platinum Relic. Yes, I know, I missed the yellow crate unintentionally. I didn't realize that while I was recording. <laughs> Having Aku invincibility stops the water from rising. Unlike Future Frenzy, I have problems with the Platinum Relic in Gone Tomorrow. Remember that you can skip the droids by double jumping and that tornado spinning around. Usually just double jumping while using the speed shoes will do. Gotta shoot that assistant out before I begin.
The platform jumping and Molotov cocktails give me some problems here. In the end, though, I can get a Platinum Relic, so it's worth the trouble. If you're going to Aku Buffer to get past the smashing walls, do it while in mid-air, not while on the ground. The only exception of the four where I do get a Platinum Relic, like I said. And that leaves Rings of Power. Each of the level warps in the lower segment of the warp room is unlocked with every five relics you obtain. So to unlock Ski Craze, you need five relics, any kind. For the Yellow Gem and Hingham High, you need ten relics, and so forth. You have to do a barrel roll to go through each of the rings in order to go at high speed. If you miss one, you'll accelerate slower, and it'll be hard to pick your speed back up. Compared to the original PlayStation game in Insane Trilogy, it's also a lot more difficult to steer your plane, so you pretty much have to use the air brakes in order to make it through every single ring. The rings also have to be flown through in order, or you miss, so... I recommend just starting off with the stopwatch and shooting out all of the balloon boxes. Then after you get all of the... How did I get that nitro without wrecking? Huh. After you break all the boxes, simply pause and select restart, and then try for winning the race and getting the relic simultaneously. That 
that's exactly what I'm gonna do. You cannot shoot down the assistant planes in this level also, if that's what you're thinking. You can only use the machine gun on the boxes. This is a race after all, they kinda have to make it be fair. I missed one of the rings, I know. I still got the platinum though. So um, yeah, I got every relic, and most of them are platinum. Nice. After getting all the gems and relics in the main levels, all of them except for the hidden ones, which are Agapus Rex and Hot Coco, and the new Future Tense level that they added in the Insane Trilogy, you have to battle Cortex once again. Compared to the original battle, this battle is completely identical with how it plays. The only difference is what Uka Uka says at the start. Other than that, you're just forced to battle him all over again with no changes. Just so you can see the game's true ending. So with this, it ends. The Time Twister machine could not hold itself together. 
We were lucky to escape. Give me the mask. With it, I shall take over the world. Come on. It is difficult to say what has happened to our enemies, but I doubt we will see them for a long time. So with that, wraps up the game's 100% part of the long play. I still have one video left to go for Crash Bandicoot Warped, where I show you how to find the Hot Coco and Agapus Rex levels, as well as play the Future Tense level that was added in Insane Trilogy. So stay tuned for that. I am Crowlister Master of Ponage. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next upload.